Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel, Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session, now I want to give the clear introduction of anomaly detection. In the previous videos, we have seen regarding the anomalies, types of anomalies uh, in the data flow graphs and what are the various kinds of the data flow graphs, the forgiving and unforgiving um, graphs and all these things. Uh, see, forgiving data flow anomaly state graph and uh, unforgiving uh, data flow anomaly state graph. All these things we have successfully completed in our previous videos. So, what is an anomaly actually? Anomaly is nothing but it can be denoted uh, by some two different number of the actions can be represented by using these two two character sequence of the actions. See, the anomaly is nothing but the two character sequence of the actions here. Okay, so next, uh, what are the various kinds of the anomalies already we have seen in our previous uh, graphs, uh, previous videos and uh, two types of the data flow anomaly state graphs also we have completed for giving and as well as unforgiving. And now, how an anomaly can be detected? That's what now we are going to see. Okay, so now I got you got the clear idea what is an anomaly and what are the various kinds of the anomaly state graphs. Okay, so anomaly detection can be done in two types. Number one is static anomaly detection and number two is dynamic uh, anomaly detection. The static anomaly detection can be done at the compile time and dynamic anomaly detection can be done at the runtime. Okay. So, what is the difference between static versus dynamic anomaly detection? Okay. Static analysis is the analysis done on the source code without actually executing. That means before executing itself, we are doing the analysis, we are analyzing the code. Okay. So, for example, the source code syntax error detection and uh, what are the syntactical errors we got? All these are examples of the static anomaly detection. And what is dynamic anomaly detection? Dynamic analysis is done on intermediate values of the uh, at the runtime. What are the various values we will pass? We are doing the analysis on those variables. At the runtime analysis, what we do, that is nothing but dynamic analysis. Okay. So, what are the things? What are the examples for this dynamic anomaly detection? Now, we are going to see. The fly as the program is being executed and is based on from the program's execution. So, a division by zero is one of the dynamic anomaly detection. If a problem such as a data flow anomaly can be detected by using static analysis methods, okay, so then it does not belong to testing, it is a language processor, okay. So, some of the errors are not comes under the static analysis, they comes under the language processor. So, we have to clearly differentiate what are the errors that will come under static anomaly detection and what are the problems that comes under the language processor. Okay. So, the best exam now coming to the dynamic anomaly detection, the very good example of this dynamic anomaly detection is nothing but uh, a division by zero. Okay. So, sorry, this one. That is nothing but a division by zero. Very good example, this one. Okay. Next one. There are so many number of the limitations are there for the static anomaly detection. Okay. So, what are they now? We are going to see. The very first one is dead variables. What is the meaning of the dead variables? The dead variables are nothing but uh, a variables which are created and deleted. Okay. So, uh, such kind of the variables uh, which are using at the runtime creation and one runtime uh, deletion are one of the drawback of the static anomaly detection. Why? Because these variables cannot having their existence in the static anomaly detection or at the uh, compile time. Okay. So, compile time we cannot find such kind of the variables which are dead variables and all these things. And next coming to the arrays. What are the various kinds of the arrays? Okay, so arrays are problematic because some of the arrays are uh, having the reference at the runtime, some specific runtime area. So such kind of the all the runtime over overheads are uh, the main uh, drawbacks in the static anomaly detection because they linked with the dynamic at the runtime. Okay, so most of the programming languages use dynamic memory allocation and dynamic arrays. Uh, this contains some kind of the garbages, etc. 
and next one records and pointers records and pointers are directly complete to your uh, dynamic memory allocation so in the static anomaly detection these won't comes under so it is also one of the big drawback these things cannot be detected at the static anomaly detection okay and dynamic subroutine and function names in a call all these are related to the runtime and dynamic so these are also not comes under the static anomaly detection and some of the false anomalies will be there uh, anomalies are specific paths even a clear bug such as ku may not be a bug k means killed u means used once killed it can be again used then the variable is not existing then the path is not achievable or unachievable such anomalies are called as false anomalies false anomalies again caused due to the runtime created variables they can be created and they can be deleted so whenever you are using them those won't be available so this is also one of the drag back for false anomalies and recoverable anomalies and alternate state path state graphs so anomaly depends upon context application and semantics and concurrency interrupts and uh, recoverable anomalies and alternate state graphs normally some anomalies can be recoverable at the runtime and alternate state graphs can be projected at the runtime but this runtime overheads will not be supported by the static anomaly detection so it is one of the drawback and concurrency interrupts and system issues so this is also one of the drawback uh, whenever we are working with the single task uniprocessor environment then static anomaly detection is okay but whenever we are working on multiprocessor environment and the dynamic memory location then concurrency interrupt and other system system issues will be there those are very uh, uh, big drawback of the static anomaly detection so all this related to the runtime issues and runtime overheads so the things which are linked with runtime issues and runtime overheads it's a big drawback of the static anomaly detection so that's why these limitations are categorized like this dead variables arrays records and pointers dynamic subroutine and function names and false anomalies recoverable anomalies and alternate state graphs concurrency interrupt and system issues these are all the main limitations of the static anomaly detection so this is nothing but the anomaly detection and as well as the anomaly uh, types of anomalies in the um, uh, <laughs> in the anomaly detection in the coming videos we talk about more so please subscribe my channel intelligible tutorials thank you for watching